nice little addition to this machine is it actually comes in a touch. It's not something you want to be using as you're pressing your load, your loading set. But I, I do find as I'm warming up, I can just literally bring my arms in or, or my biceps together. And that just gets a really nice connection on my chest, initiating that sort of feeling. It'll be interesting to see how much of a pump I can keep or how long it'd last. It's last last push session. It was the session where we had to go in out, go out and eat. And actually Nerf text this morning said we're probably gonna have to eat tonight. And then for that sort of terminology for, for us is going to eat up or going to eat means we're gonna have to have something off plan, which usually I'd, I'd struggle with. The only time I've never struggled with that was when I was coached by Jordan, just because of how he could manage things and how he could speak to me and tell me that what I needed. With, with meal loss, he wanted me to have a meal off plan every weekend and I just couldn't do it. I just wasn't comfortable doing it. So I never had one. Obviously me telling him I wasn't doing it, I wasn't saying I wasn't, I wasn't. Um, but this time again with Nathan, I'm very confident in his ability of knowing my body already. Um, known me for a long time. So I'm quite happy to go and do as he says. And, and people are thinking, yeah, you, oh, of course you're gonna wanna go and eat pizza, but when you've done this as long as I have and when you've eaten as much food as I have, <laughs> no, no meal's a treat. You know, when you're back end of prep and when you've peeled out your mind, yes. But right now my appetite is zero and a meal off plan to me would be it. Not, not, not eating a meal at all. Right, ranting over. Oh, that feels so nice. So I just bring it in like that and squeeze with, with the load on. I won't do this on my loading set. Oh. I'd like to get stuck on this today for six or eight reps. So I was on speaking last time with when I was training Paul that my actual warm-ups were still 20 to 15 reps and almost still doing four sets. But the first two sets technically were just warm-up sets. It's a little bit different with chest simply because of the, the muscle will fatigue much faster for me personally. So in order for me to do more volume and then try and load something, I'm just not going to have, I just don't have the capacity <laughs> to do it. So I'm trying to go into the, the set it really in a in a true push pull leg sort of manner where i'm going into the first set as fresh as possible um a second set as well third set again will be slightly higher volume and then really from there the session will be very similar to to, to the pull but initially first exercise just trying to get as much as i can of, of load through the chest while i've still got that stability in my scapula and it doesn't start to can get too tired and piss me off so one more warm-up set so that's gonna be That'll be three to four warm-up sets then. This set, this warm-up set will just be two reps. I'd like to hit an eight, a controlled eight, not just a moving eight. I feel like I've got a bit of a pump already, which is unexpected. My conversation with Nathan this morning, I thought I was like, pretty sure my session's gonna be quite dead. But touch wood, first time to go. It was always me versus me. It was never me versus you. Misunderstood. Get up, had to beat those eyes. Got up and I beat those eyes. Misunderstood. It was always me versus me. It was never me versus you. And now I'm good. Wake up and I do my part. Wake up and I do my job. Just how I should. It was always me versus me. It was never me versus you. Misunderstood. Get up, had to beat those eyes. Got up and I beat those eyes. Misunderstood. It was always me versus me. It was never me versus you. And now I'm good. Wake up and I do my part. Wake up and I do my job. I'll take a nine though. With rest times as well, because especially on this exercise, I'm solely focused on performance. My rest times are going to be a little bit longer. Again, if I'm doing the high volume training and looking for more metabolic work, my rest times are going to be a little bit shorter. The load's not going to be as heavy. So just taking my time. And again, I've had a few questions recently by clients. If I've sent over new training programs and I've not maybe specified times between exercises or rest times between sets, how long should I be resting? And really there is, there is no set answer because every single exercise will be different for, for an individual. If you're doing a deadlift, an RDL, an SLDL, you're not going to rest for 60 to 90, minute, 60 to 90 seconds before you do the next one. It's going to be two, three, maybe four, sometimes five minutes, depending if you're training in a party or two or three maybe. And again, if you're going to be doing a pec fly, you're not going to wait three, four, five minutes between a set. So it depends where your strengths are in, and also uh, you as an individual, how that particular muscle group how good its endurance is, how good you can go back in and, and keep that connection on. So for example, again, for my chest, it has to be a little bit longer. It has to be longer because I just can't get the connection I can with quads, for example. So with quads, I can go in a little bit quicker, even though I'm slightly fatigued, I can still get that good connection. But, sorry man, just start doing it again. <laughs> but with chest, a little bit longer, rambled out the camera there for a couple of minutes, 
and I'd probably be about ready to go in now anyway. So and another thing as well, speaking to clients, when they're sending me form videos over a video over the set, that's what your set should look like. Especially if we're in a high, a high intensity setting, low volume. Sometimes if we're escalating volume through, a, through an exercise or a session, not always, but especially low volume, high intensity, your last rep should look like that all the time. If it doesn't, then we've got more in the tank that we can start putting into the sets for sure. Come on, the one. So that's that done. Three sets. First set heavy. Second set slightly less weird, but I managed to grind out some really good reps on there. Third set lighter, but again. So it's gone something like nine reps, 12 reps, 15 reps there which is perfect for me for chest at the start. Anything less is a little bit too heavy and not enough connection. I'll just be moving it. So a really good start, happy with that. So if you wanted to get a little bit technical and geeky, this is a second exercise. It would be much more suited first at inner press, simply because on the first exercise, I can lock myself into the pad. I've got a much more stability. Now I'm a little bit more tired, especially in this range. I'm going to be a bit more vulnerable. I don't have as much stability by, by pressing on a, on a flat incline than I do in an upright machine. However, for me, the, the trade-off is the fact that I'm fresh there and I can get as much out of my chest as possible. And then here, it's still going to get a great stimulus. Just not as efficient as if I was going to do it first. But what I get from this at 100%, I don't get from that 100%. So just prioritizing that sort of exercise selection and getting the most out of what you can. Again, so no log booking for me. I, I, I will never log book again. We are a useful tool for a lot of people. Yeah. Well, touching on what I said last week, it's like, it's so easy to just chase log. Yeah, yeah. And just to chase that then performance I mean, where markers that you've set. And it's great setting a performance marker if you're doing the same sort of thing. So if you're sprinting 100 meters in 12 seconds, and then you're beating that, and everything in your day is the same, you know then you're beating it. Yeah, if you're sprinting 100 meters in 12 seconds at eight o'clock at night, and then you beat that at, in the morning. We're not pressure. The, the, difference, the difference is between the fatigue of the two sessions is massive. So your performers can't be measured unless everything is the same every day. So if you work in construction, one day you may be just passing something to a, a joiner, for example, in a kitchen. Or another day you might be digging some footings and digging six foot holes. The performance markers on them days are going to be completely different. If you're an online coach and you have the ability and the luxury to do the same thing every day, that's great. If you're not, you simply can't measure your performance on something that differentiates day to day in terms of energy expenditure or if you train at different times especially. And the more experienced you are as a competitor or, or a trainer or anything, you know where you need to be. Like for the for, for example, uh, not to wait in nine reps and my chest started fatigue and so I'm thinking, right, okay, I'm gonna set, I'm gonna stop that now. I'm gonna try and lift what is technically heavy for me and just try and get a lot out of the chest while it's still as fresh as possible. And then from there I can start to start to come down and get more feel. But if my logbook said I needed to do something else, I'll probably do something else. Although intrinsically right now I know that this is what I need to do for the experience that I've gathered over the last 18 years.
Oh, considering I'm 10 pounds down, I feel really good today. I was doing some removals yesterday. Like just move, like moving house. And when I dropped the van off, I had to walk back, which was like 2,000 steps, <laughs> which is nothing. But I was like, fucking hell, I can feel that drop. But my steps are like 6,000 a day. Cardio is 35 minutes in the morning. I did that on a one and a half incline level 2.7 now. Minimal output, it's, it's very strange. That once my body goes into that free fall, it just keeps, keeps coming down, which is fantastic if I just wanted to be in shape at lean all the time. I want to be fucking jacked and shredded. Something's just not fucking happening for me. <laughs> I'll get there. It's my fucking life mission. I've been a good coach today. Well, actually, I've been a fucking good coach every day. Um, and something that I'm so passionate about, something that I love is coaching. I've done it for a long, long time now. And I'm sure I've mentioned for the first five years, a coach, I didn't charge a penny. I just love helping people. I love watching people achieve the goals. And just right now, I feel like as a coach, I'm flying. I've I'm, I'm getting great transformations, great rapport with everybody I'm working with. The team are just absolutely nailing it. And I just feel like I'm in my absolute element at the minute, like really at the peak of my game. So I'm really loving that. And I've just given Joe some Hydromax in his drink to, to have when he's walking around filming me. How far in to prep are you, Joe? Ten, ten weeks. So he's, he's a little bit hungry. So a little bit of that has made his day. This is his uh, refeed for the next five weeks. <laughs> I've got one of my IFBB pros competing this weekend in China. He's Taiwanese. He's called Lion on Instagram. He's called Liu. He's just sent me his checking pictures. Come and have a look at these, Joe. So it's Thursday there now. He competes on Saturday. So I'm talking about just finding the groove with competitors. Every day at the minute, I've just got special things happening throughout the team and it's so fucking good to see. I just wanted to share that with you. So if you want to look like Liu, three weeks ago, he was 45 stone. <laughs> so a dip or a dip variation you can do this more tricep bias or chest bias it's obviously going to hit both however depending on where your body position is shoulder position as well is what you're going to bias most so for me here i'm going to make sure that i get the tricep deep in the stretch but then i'm also going to lean my chest over so i've got my full tricep and there's a clavicular part of my chest in the stretch and then from there i'm going to almost drive my biceps in almost like if you're trying to squeeze your chest like this and that's going to hit my triceps when i get to the top but it's gonna prioritize my chest throughout that middle of the movement. So it's almost like a hybrid. I'm not, I'm not tucking my shoulders back, so I'm only hitting tricep and locking out, or I'm not leaning over, so I'm only pressing like, like an Nautilus press almost, like a chest. I'm leaning back and getting the stretch from the tricep, then into the chest, and then dragging out, and then finishing with tricep. So it is a compound in the truest form, but it's also weighted because right now, the amount of strength I've got in both triceps and chest probably resembles that of a nursery age child. Oh, I did. So very slow deliberate throughout that. Oh, I feel so good. Can't describe that feeling that I get from that. But triceps are pumped chest is pumped and stretched. And again, weighted, I got like nine reps, as I, as I suspected, before I just put everything shut down. And I'll probably just repeat that again. Might get seven or eight before everything fails, before I have to pump it up. So just two sets on that. We've actually got another press. So that's one, two, three, four presses in a row. But the next machine is uh, a, quite a special machine, I find. So Kuba, who's the owner of the gym, bought into Nitram, the equipment guys. If you if you train, you'll know what Nitram is. We've got some good pieces, but I, I, think, I think it's called the Pro Series, potentially. Kuba being an athlete who's hugely performance-based, very technical in his ability to train, wants to create machines where the resistance profile and everything is suited to everybody. So in the gym, he's already modified a lot of the kit. So some of the prime kit where the handles are quite chunky, we've taken them off, or he's taken them off, we've got something handles 
and just changing that angle sometimes or, or body position in a machine by a degree or so makes it massively different. And he's created this next machine where it's all about, it's a flat press, an upright flat press with a drop off on it is absolutely perfect. So for now, I'm, I'm very weak out here. There's not a lot of stability at all. Pretty strong here still. So we want to be strong here. And then as we're getting weak, so we don't have to roll or use anything else, you can stay in that position and then it drops off. Just like a prime profile, just like a prime would on like a camber. But this is better. And, you, and you know, like I said, you are upright, so you're locked in. There's a couple of guys on it now, so we'll just take a minute before we go on it. But that again, to finish as a press, later on in the session, this is fantastic. And then we've got some delts, I believe, a, a set of a, a, an exercise of delts. And then on to arms, or actually we've got fly, fly, delts, arms. So ideally, maybe two sets of 10, two sets of 10 to 12 on here, because it's dropping off in the length, and sorry, in the short, might be able to power a few more out, so a little bit more aggressive out the bottom on the last couple of reps, as long as it's safe. But with chest being quite fatigued at the minute, you don't want to be throwing too much momentum. Grinders have I ripped out today? It's like five or six on chest as well. So standing cable fly, just one set. But the fly machine, the cable that we have is a Nautilus, and it has a chest or a back pad, so you can. So then, when you're doing your cable fly, you're not rocking it; you're supported. But it's been used, and we've waited ages for that. So I'm done waiting today. I've got patience to a point. So still a fly movement. I'll just do this next rotation. I'll, I'll just swap them around. But I've got everything in the stretch pretty good today, so I'm not really focusing too solely on just the stretch here. I'm really trying to get it short if I can. So, our oh, fucking delts. So, delts, aren't we? It's gonna be five pounds down from depletion. Well, uh, do you know what, actually? They said that, so I don't know if you caught that. Joe says, like, oh, you're gonna be like five pounds down from depletion. And I actually think the sessions are so long. When I've been doing high volume, and I'm in and out within an hour, I still got my pump and I go. Whereas here, my pump dissipated when I was speaking about it over there, which was now like 30, 25, 30 minutes ago. And as I'm going through the session, I just feel myself getting flat and fly. I quite like that feeling. In a prep. In a prep, which is not a prep, which I'm just gonna get a fucking. I'm gonna get so lean I'm nearly dead. Like like death's door, dead. And then I'll be like, I need to go into a show just to show everyone. But it's not prep. It's not prep because on Saturday, which is Friday, I'm actually going out into a 
social setting. I, I'm, I'm living with one of my mates at the minute until I, I find somewhere in Rotherham. And I'm going to be the designated driver and take him and his couple of his mates into town. So I've got like two hours before I need to eat. So I said, oh, I'll sit in there and have a couple of waters while whatever, and then take it back. So I'm going to be in a bar with normal people. Like, luckily I'm like 240 pound now, not 285, 290 pound. Because that'd be fucking hell on earth. So I, I think I can blend in if I just wear a bit of oversized stuff. Otherwise, how much do you bench? What do you eat, mate? Fucking hell, look at size of you. Fucking hell, mate, look at size of you. You've got a gym, don't you? I've got a mate that looks like you, but he's a little bit bigger and a little bit leaner. I've got a mate that competes, he won fucking Mr. Northumbria and he's fucking... Yeah. My uncle was Dorian Yates, arm wrestle. This is all male attention as well. There's, there's no female attention that comes with this. Apart from, can I poke your chest? <laughs> well, it's not a prep if I'm designated driving people. However, everything will get hit, nothing will get changed. And if anything, I might get a few more steps. We should do that a little bit more. Obviously not film me like... In the... <laughs> but like, dude, I'm, start I'm starting to broaden my horizons a bit. Like a little bit. And it's probably worth touching on this, actually. That, that's four or five years. Even though my progress has been superior, I've been crippled from bodybuilding. And people know I'm diligent and people know I'm on it and people know I'm bodybuilding through and through. But it, it is getting... It's getting worse. Like an addiction starts recreationally and it gets worse to the point where when I wake up, I, I need to finish my, if my cardio is not finished at, at 7.30 and I finish eating my meal at 8.30 and I'm not talking 8.28, I, I finish at 8.30. If I finish at 8.32, fuck's sake, I fucking must have slept in two minutes longer or I was fucking about with that. And oh, I can't go here and do this because it's too many steps or I'm going to have to prep a meal and take it with me so I'm going to fuck about and I'm going to get stressed. So my life was literally, I was, I was, I was almost in solitary confinement and that, that has ruined relationships around me, the family and things like that. And actually having this not prep and be like, do you know what, I can come down, I can go trampolining with the kids and not have to stand there like a lemon because expenditure and you know, I need to eat and oh, I just I need my digestion to settle. And I can enjoy time with that. And actually, my, progr my progress has been so good because I'm not stressed, but zero stressed. And although in my mind, somewhere back here, that doesn't make me the hardcore bodybuilder because I'm not fucking sleeping on a mattress on the floor reading Flex magazine and fucking drinking animal protein shakes. It's not bodybuilding, you know, it's just... Maybe once upon a time it was, but it doesn't need to be now. And I actually feel so much better and I, en I enjoy the process so much more. And I get excited about days. Today, after I've trained, I'm going to go and buy myself a new motorbike helmet at Harley Davidson. But I'd never do that because I need to make sure that I'm, I'm in, I'm cooked. My, my clients are done by this time and I need to be in bed for 10 p.m. It's not 10 or 5, 10 p.m. So if I go to bed at 10 or 5 tonight or 10, 15, it's fine. I'll just sleep until yeah, 15 minutes more in the morning. It doesn't matter. So that sort of crippling anxiety was nailed me for so long. It's lifted. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> so yeah, Joe just made an interesting point. So Joe's on prep now and what I just described then, Joe said that's exactly where I'm at now. And I need to make the point as well that that's not a bad thing. So in, in from 29 to 32 when I won my pro car, being like that is what got me where I got and got me to where I am. However, there comes a point where that obsessiveness that diligence that almost like say anxiety about everything you're doing will give you no extra so to a point it will because it'll mold you into a fantastic bodybuilder someone who's regimented someone who is very good with structure which is so important one goes in hand with the other but now for me that structure that obsessiveness gives me nothing and in fact it takes away from my progress so don't feel like oh, i'm too obsessed because you your parents or your friends or your colleagues or your girlfriend will say this is ridiculous this is too obsessed and, and not everyone or very few people will understand your journey actually especially within bodybuilding and competitive bodybuilding more so so don't feel like you are doing things over the top and obsessively because you need to do what you need to do but there will be a point of diminishing returns with that and that's where i believe where i believe i'm at actually and like I said, everything will get hit, nothing will be missed, it never will be, all my meals get eaten, I've got non-negotiables like everybody else. But it's a little bit more wiggle room, we should see a little bit more progress.
So as promised, a physique up there, which I normally never do with her unless I'm fucking healed. Just showing I'm not like either. I'm not full, but I'm not complete. I figured I could maybe pave away. No, it's easy to count the days till I fade away. But you know, I always find my way to turn a bad look in a field or something solid. I'm on target for a major play. Used to waste a day away. She hit me to say I'm on a mind, but my commitment to the game got me OT till I OD and then I fade away. Lately, I've been giving doubt tones and meeting milestones. No way I'm giving all of me. She settled for a left hand with a gym over a piece of me. This is where I am. 242 pound this morning, 10 pounds down. I'm like, I'm actually not too displeased with that. My midsection's still got coming a lot in terms of it's like where my hips are here. So generally this comes in much tighter. I'm a little bit flat here and on delts, but that's because I'm not blasting with glycogen and that's what sort of comes in last for me. I think I probably, well, so I think I know I'm just gonna need more size. I can see the shape and the look is decent, but we're against the Genetically, it's like they've got the shape and the look with massive lots of density. Like nobody can out condition me, I know that, and that's what I need to play to my strengths. So last year with me, I was really quite get it right, obviously. There were parts in the prep, maybe a few weeks out, do a great job where it was like, fucking this is on. Yeah. And like me and us was convinced that there was a place going here for an Olympia, right? And actually, so was Neil. And obviously, I just believe people who've been there and, and seen it. You know, like Neil, Neil said, well, I've been there and I've seen it. Like, then you, you are there. And then from there, it sort of went a little bit downhill. But that was just my body being my body and, and communication. Just been a little bit off because of the time difference. Hey, I was behind and all of that. It doesn't seem like a lot when you lose £10 in seven days. And I'm saying, oh, I mean, I suppose I lost £5 pounds in yesterday. But it's sort of, that, that was sort of like where sort of avalanche happened. Because of that, I couldn't really get the condition where, where I wanted. So I wasn't, I wasn't quite conditioned enough, but I wasn't, I don't have the muscle mass there to be able to compete with the shape. Well, actually, I mentioned you a couple of times, actually. So between Jay and Fabian, just in the Charlotte Pro, just gone. The guy who won Fabian was just, he wasn't as conditioned and he wasn't technically as good as, as Jay up from second, but superior in terms of probably genetics and, and, and structure at, the, at this time it meant that he could win over what was technically a better athlete. So it's like, you have, you have to play to your strengths. So to me, it's, it's that's, that's and actually just watching the One Road Pro Show, or the, is that what it was, One Road Pro Show? The guys who were in the top five later, top three, were very small, like muscularly, very small, but well, they were fucking, um, so when I look back at my pictures of my pro card win sort of season, like, I'm very pleased with that look. I'm proud of it. And it's not because of because I was tiny. I felt very small throughout, like I didn't even train when I had clothes on. And just losing that sort of identity of, of that and just listening to Jordan, Jordan Peters saying, look Jimmy, you need to go to condition on has been. Like nobody's experiencing this condition, you need to be there. And I was like, fucking let's go. And that needs to be there again and I've given everything clear instructions that we go there again. And, and I've got two more years worth of muscle there. So as small as I feel like I did in the prep, actually when I'm on stage, the difference, I'll, you know, I was very happy with all of us actually for the first time in Poland. And I've been a lot of special guys there. So that was the first time I sort of believed that actually I'd be quite good this. Which sounds ridiculous because I've already won the shows, but you just don't know what it's, your standards not great. So that is the goal, healed. So I would like to come on with me, get fucking shredded. Uh, let's see what we can do. And it'll be pretty gnarly to see, actually, because everyone loves fucking a freak, don't they? And if I can't be a big freak, I'll just be a straight freak. <laughs> so, guys, thank you for tuning in. I know that was long, and there's probably a lot of information in that. I don't know what uh, Joel's slamming there, but I enjoyed that today. It's a good session. I feel good. I'm going to buy a helmet now. Probably spend far too much money on a blown bike, and I'll drive to right twice and put back in the garage. It's good. See you next time. Do some legs, do you reckon, just do some legs? Do some legs or more bike delivery. Yeah, more bike delivery. Mom, mom. Fix it.